I'm a big complainer. Let's just say it like that. No, not not a complainer. I'm I'm pretty critical when I'm when I'm looking at plugins, and I'm doing most of this on ear. I trust my ears, and I trust what I'm hearing. And whenever there is a a saturator plugin or a distortion plugin, I, I almost always make make the same comment. Like it sounds grainy. It doesn't sound analog. It sounds digital. It doesn't have any depth. And I couldn't explain this, but I thought it had something to do with the way software was programmed and and software was. Um, designed. I, I had a few ideas why this could be like that. I wanted to make sure, so I asked Chris from Air Windows. I will link his, his website below. Air Windows is, he makes awesome plugins and he really knows his shit. And I asked him like, like, what is this thing about? And then he gave a thorough and long explanation. And now I'm going to try to give this explanation to you guys in a simpler way. And I will try to illustrate it a bit more. And part of the outcome of this test is a big reason why not only distortion and saturation plugins don't really work as the analog counterparts, but also if you go to a more milder form of analog emulation, why that also doesn't work. Because in the end, if you emulate analog equipment, a big chunk of, of your emulation will be the saturation and distortion that it is generating. Let me show you what I'm talking about after the break, of course. All right, so I have a bit of a test environment. First of all, I have an analyzer. The analyzer is really important for this test. And the analyzer, as you can see, goes from 20 hertz over here to 96 kilohertz over here. 96, that's a lot. Why does it go to 96? Well, I'm running at the uh, 192 kilohertz or 192,000 hertz sampling rate, which is the highest common sampling rate. Most interfaces can run at 192. 192 takes up a lot of uh, CPU resources and most people run at 48. However, I want to run at 192 because I want to show you frequencies above 20 kilohertz. And you can only do that in, in higher sampling rates because half of the sampling rate is what you can accurately register in software, in, in, in digital audio. For 192, this is 96 kilohertz. And that 96 kilohertz mark is what we call the Nyquist frequency. So everything above Nyquist isn't accurately sampled. It is there, but it's not accurate. And it will actually be re reproduced as a frequency below 96 kilohertz. And this is really important for the test that I'm doing. What I also have, I have an audio channel with a few plugins on it, which I'm going to use. And I have a return channel over here with the console on it. Now, what I'm doing on the console, on the Neumann console is actually pretty crazy. I'm misusing it. I'm making it to misbehave. Now, making Neumann to misbehave is pretty difficult, but it's misbehaving right now and it's distorting. For this test, you can replicate it yourself. The, the kind of distortion you are using doesn't really matter. So it doesn't really matter if you use old uh, harmonic harmonics or even harmonics or whatever doesn't matter it's it's about something else than what type of distortion i'm use, using it's it's about the fact that i'm distorting so here's a strange thing happening or it's actually not that strange we're sending one kilohertz to the console like i can show you like like this is what we're sending one kilohertz but we're getting a whole lot of shit back. Well, this is actually distortion. This is actually what saturation and harmonics is about. So extra frequencies being generated. And those frequencies are spaced with a certain space between it so that it sounds nice. Now, at one kilohertz, this is not that, that special actually. It's just some harmonics. But if we go upwards, if we go upwards to, let's say, let's go to somewhere like this, nine, nine point eight. We still have the same principle, but the harmonics, most of the harmonics fall outside of our human hearing. We don't need them. And normally we can only sample with 48 kilos, you can sample to 24 kilos. So you can sample up to here. So, so we would only need to see these two harmonics. Now, I also have a very famous, for my channel famous or not famous because I removed that video, uh, Decapitator plugin. And the reason why I removed that video was because I was hearing something, but I couldn't explain it. So let's let's enable the decapitator. Let's also make it distort the hell out of it. And now we're seeing the decapitator is behaving the same. So it's actually creating almost the same harmonics as on the Neumann. It's actually interesting, uh, a bit different. It's creating one harmonic at 20 kilohertz and then the rest, yeah, we, we don't really need that. Now this is of course at 192 and now it's behaving exactly like it should behave. But what we should do right now is switch back to 48 kilohertz. Now this isn't that simple for me because I have to stop my screen recording because my screen, the, the clocking of the screen recording is slaved to the audio interface because that's how it works. All right, so now we are at, at 48 kilohertz 
Uh, let me show you that, like, no witchcraft. We're running at 48 kilohertz. As you can see over here, it still looks kind of the same. Uh, of course, the analyzer has changed because the analyzer doesn't want to analyze anything above 24 kilohertz because that's Nyquist. Uh, so the analyzer changes itself. But we have the, the fundamental, so the, the normal sine wave. We have the harmonic, but there's also some crap coming up here. Now, I wanna also want to show you what the analog counterpart is doing at 48. And that's exactly what we're expecting. So we are getting in a bit of a strange territory right now. Like, what is happening? Look at this, look at this. At high frequencies, like 13 kilohertz, 13.5. Look at what we have, all the crap that we're creating. These are higher harmonics, which the computer cannot register, so you get aliasing. And the aliasing means that it, it kicks back into lower frequencies. Here's the analog counterpart with a shitload of distortion on it. And it's actually... <laughs> This frequency is actually so high that it doesn't distort on it anymore because the next harmonic is above Nyquist. So we only get a sine wave. And then if we look at what the decapitator is doing, we get a lot of shit. Now, according to Chris, and actually according to myself as well, this is the problem that I have with a lot of plugins. This is what I'm hearing. Now, look at, look at what, what is happening with the harmonics when I'm going to fine tune this. Like, look at this. This is a fundamental. I'm moving it to the right right now. Yeah? So, for instance, a tremolo on a guitar, or bending on a guitar, or, you know, small deviations in, in pitch of a note. Look what happens with the, with the stuff that is kicked back. Because now I'm going down, but this one here, this one goes up. Now, if you're not musical, then I don't think you know what I'm talking about. But if you're a musical person, you pretty much know that one note going up and the other one going down and doing strange stuff. It's not really nice in the ears. So that's really strange. Now, why, why is this happening? Why is this actually happening? And why isn't this happening with the analog counterpart? Well, right now on the console, the console is creating those harmonics. If I switch back to 192, you will see those harmonics again. L let me do that once more. Let me do that once more. The harmonics are there. The harmonics are there. The, the, the console is still creating those harmonics. Those harmonics at 13 kilohertz. Why don't we see that aliasing stuff from the analog part? Well, that is because on the interface, on my audio interface, on Motu in my case, there is a, a filter. There's a super steep filter over here. When I, when I clock at 48 kilohertz, they put the filter over here so that uh, I think they start filtering at 20 or 21 kilohertz. And they super steeply filter off those frequencies so that they, they won't arrive actually at the AD stage, at the stage where things are going from analog to digital. Because if they come there, then the samples cannot keep up. So it will try to sample something that it cannot sample because it cannot, it cannot grab the frequency fast enough because the frequency is actually faster than it is grabbing the frequency. Let's just say it like that. I can go into sampling theorem, but there's a lot of that on the internet already. Now, actually that filter, it's called the anti-aliasing filter. And actually the, the, it, it defines part of the quality of an, of an audio interface and, or an, an audio converter, an AD converter. And that is because that filter is really important. Now, it isn't only an analog filter, there's also an, an, a high oversampling digital filter to really filter out all those frequencies, to make sure that all those frequencies are gone before it's made digital. That's what, that's what the interface is actually doing all the time. And that's also the reason why we were only seeing that 13.5 that kilohertz tone when we were running at 48 kilohertz. Right now, it's, it's of course putting that filter somewhere over here. Maybe even further further down there. I, I, I didn't measure this, this yet, and I've, I'm not actually not sure how to measure that. But if we then go to the, to, the, uh, to the digital one, then we have a problem. Because, actually, you know, at 192, because I'm really driving it loud right now, I'm already getting the, um, uh, the shit back from it again. Now, what is happening on the digital one? It is actually the, the, the whole algorithm is generating that high frequency content, that, that those high frequency harmonics. It is actually, it is generating it, but it cannot filter them out because it's running at 48 kilohertz. So it is super difficult to detect those things and also cut them out. You cannot cut them out because you're running at 48 kilohertz because you're not sampling that. So the computer is not seeing, the computer cannot see above 24 kilohertz when running at 48 kilohertz. So it cannot cut out this stuff because it isn't there. And because of aliasing, it is actually in the hearable section. It, it, it's fire, it is fired back at the hearable section because samples are generated. Samples are at strange locations and that's why it's at the hearable part. Now, as soon as it's in the hearable part, the computer thinks 
Okay, it's okay because it's it's within the hearable part, so I'm not doing anything. Now, what manufacturers can do, but as Chris said it in the live, I think he said it like this: they are most of the times too lazy to do this. Is oversampling. Now I'm checking again, but I cannot. There's no button in here to put the decapitator on oversampling. By the way, I'm using the decapitator only as a demo. There are a lot of plugins out there that have the same issue and you can you can test it yourself because it's a super easy test. You're seeing how I'm doing it. It's a super easy test. If a plugin would oversample, so would uh, oversample four times or eight times within the plugin. So actually within the plugin, the sample rate is way higher. Then they can actually capture those harmonics at the place where they actually should be and then put a filter on it, like, like a normal steep, digital, super steep filter over it to filter them out. And of course, the more distortion you are generating, the more oversampling you are going to need, because the more distortion you're generating, the further in the high frequencies those, those harmonics are actually going to be. So where do I want to go with all of this? Well, first of all, I wanted to explain this to you because it's it's very interesting uh, theory. But I'm also going to use this in future uh, snake oil episodes because I think it's a very important thing. Because if you claim to be like analog and blah 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 blah, and you're not even oversampling within your plugin in order to get that analog thing, you just have to oversample because then it would sound like the same as a as an analog piece of equipment attached to your to your computer. Now, this, this whole story is of course oversimplified and a bit overdone, and that's because I'm overdoing it just a bit to make clearer results for you guys. But you can replicate this test yourself. You only need an analyzer, a DAW, and a plugin. So as, as always, I, I challenge you guys to test this yourself and to, to really check your plugins, like, like which ones are actually distorting in a nice way and which one are actually, actually making a lot of crap. I'm testing this with sine waves, but imagine what is happening when you have a whole lot of musical information in this in this part. So like between 10K and 20K, there's a lot of musical information in here, which is actually freshness of the song, but it fires all the way back in the hearable section. So actually that freshness is creating a lot of of, of grain and 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 sand in your in your sound. I, I call it grain and sand. I don't know how you call it. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to say today. And I really want to know uh, what you guys think of this story. So leave your comments in the comment section down below and also leave your hate in the comment section down below because it's better to leave it in the comment section than to hit someone's brain out or something. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you want to support me, you can do that by pledging a bit to my Patreon campaign. I will link it over here and there will soon be t-shirts like this one on that campaign. Or maybe even they already are there when, uh, when, I, when I release this video. I don't, I don't know yet. Let's look at Patreon over here. If you want to see more of my videos, that, because that's also supporting me more, watching more videos, you can check one of them uh, over here. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell because that makes sure that I don't have to make uh, clickbaity thumbnails anymore. Keep pushing and bye bye.